Danite Radio. Welcome to the Counter Revolution. What's Bro. up? Games down. <laughs> Come on, man. Top 11. You're going to make me shut up. Down. <laughs> Better great. finish your game if you're top 11. Right. Keep going. We'll, uh, can't bail we'll, out of that. we'll talk over you. <laughs> you can give us updates. <laughs> Gunshots and stuff. It's you can turn good. the sound off, though, if you're going to keep playing your game. <sighs> Can't have the sound off. How is he supposed to hear footsteps? That's true. Oh, Rocky's playing PUBG, so that you guys are aware. <laughs> Shadow's clearly a noob. <laughs> I have never played PUBG. I'm the very definition of a noob. Welcome to the podcast. Rocky's not talking, and me and Shadow are taking a drink at the same time. So you're welcome for that, listeners. Silence. The sound of silence. <laughs> <laughs> Love that song, bro. But you only like both the disturbed versions. version, huh? Oh, you both like both versions? versions? The, the disturbed version is super good. Dude, have you heard the cram or the who's that band? Bad Wolves version of the cranberry song? Zombie? Zombie. It's no. cool, dude. It's freaking cool. Cranberry's version is pretty good too, but not as good. Yeah. But. Have you heard the cranberries song Zombie? I'm I'm not sure. It's it seems like Zombie. Yeah. Is that the cranberry version? Yeah. 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 The Bad Wolves did a version that's super cool. I took it up. Yeah. It's pretty good. There's that update on music with us. All right. This one's for Dad especially. It's really going to make him mad. So the song... Uh... Oh, crap. <laughs> I think he's already mad because you forgot. <laughs> and now we're just dead air. <laughs> he's, he's ticked. So... What is Does Dad song? hate dead air? No. No, he hasn't said anything about uh, it. But. What is that song? Dang it. I think he hates Do you have content. any tune or any words to well, give us? The the remakes by the Dixie Chicks and Nine Inch Nails remade one too. <laughs> it's, uh... Uh... What? I wanna touch... The, no, that's not... <laughs> that's not what even the song. It? Dang it. All right, he's gonna look that up. I'm gonna look it up. That's funny. Oh. Johnny Cash's most famous song was done by Nine Inch Nails. Was it Nine Inch Ring of Fire? Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. No. I hurt. Dude, Johnny Cash oh, is I like really the. Like uh, who's the guy in Zombie Land that I can't stand? Woody Harrelson. Bill Murray. <laughs> Bill Murray. <laughs> Johnny Cash is like the Bill Murray of old music. You don't like Bill Murray? Dude, nope. I, I love it. That's not it. I love him for 15 minutes in Zombie Land right before he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you not like him in anything else? It's not. Dude. All right. <laughs> This is my experience with Bill Murray. We're going for a hot take, folks. You're going to love this. I, everyone says, Bill Murray's so funny. So I watch every Bill Murray movie I can find, and I'm yet to find one that I like, <laughs> except for Zombieland. 15 minutes in Zombieland. <laughs> That's like, funny. All right. This guy's not that funny. Keep him coming. I like Bill. Dude, I've watched every show. Have you ever seen any of his, like unscripted stuff like any of his interviews um no no that's another that's another thing though i haven't seen any of his interviews but i've heard great stories about bill murray yeah like bill murray going to bars and like singing karaoke with people yeah and like being there till two in the morning and people are like well it's getting late we gotta go home you know and uh and Bill Murray's like, oh, man. And so everyone feels bad for Bill Murray and stays and sings Carrie Hook with him until 5 in the morning. That, I want to like him. I want to like that guy. You love but, all, oh, all the stories about him. Uh, but for uh, the life of him, he can't. Did you, yeah, just, did you watch the second Zombieland? No. Did you? No. Get on that, like, is it, stat. Is it good? I personally believe it's great. And they do a really good job of carrying jokes over, like, into the next movie. And uh, one of the jokes they carry over is... Did you find the song? Yeah. Okay, Go ahead. Finish this. Uh, one of the jokes they carry over is some person that they meet says, oh, he got murried. And they were like, wait, murried? Is that... And she was like, yeah, it's when you accidentally kill someone, especially someone famous, because you think... That they're a zombie. <laughs> it's so funny. That is funny. And they're like, oh. Well, so, they start ahead. making fun of the guy that kills Bill Murray. They're like, what kind of idiot would kill Bill Murray? <laughs> and the kid's kind of like, yeah, 
who, who the heck would do that? <laughs> Woody Harrelson's glaring at him. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, uh, I also heard a story about Bill Murray where, you know, the Chive website, they mm-hmm. made those Bill Murray shirts. I didn't know that, but... So I guess those sell like crazy, dude. Like, they make Bill more Murray money shirts, on dude. those shirts than the Anything website else. makes at all. <laughs> and Bill Murray, you know, no hard feelings, just like, oh, well, that's cool. Wish I'd have thought of that in the 70s, you know? Like, <laughs> so, or the 80s, whenever he was big, I don't know. 70s might have been too long ago, but... Um, 90s? I don't These know. ones? Really on the right, on the left, I mean? No, it's like just a silhouette. Or, I don't know, how do you do, what, what is that? Have you seen them? Look up the Chai Bill Murray. That's exactly what I looked up, and that was the first. So those ones probably do pretty good too, but they, the original ones that they came out with are just like a shadow, you know? Okay. What I'm saying, where it's, there's no. There's no details or anything? So I think so that was right. No, that's the same one I found. Oh, that's not a silhouette. That's black and white. Now I feel like an idiot. <laughs> We're all showing each other these pictures, and the audience is like, what are they talking about? Oh, my gosh. About? Shut up. I'm sick of this podcast. This is why we only have 30 listeners. Yeah. Well, Bill Murray. 20 listeners with several of them listening more than once. Shive. Shive. Shirt. Yeah, I'm not finding anything, boys. Interesting. If you're at home, you can use this dead air to look it up on your phone. Dude, I that think... could be it, I guess. Maybe I'm just open the night, but I've seen different ones that are... I, I... Anyways, tell us about those, those chive shirts. Anyways, well, he just... Bill Murray just had no hard feelings, you know? He's just like... Because they used his yeah, image, and he's, he's like, not getting royalties for it or anything. Like, well, whatever. And he might be now, I don't know. You know, maybe that's why he's so cool about it, because they offered it or something, but... I just remember hearing that... The interview and him just being like, no, I kind of wish I thought of it, but, you know, good job, you know. Nice. And I don't know. If your face sold a bunch of T-shirts, could you really be that bitter about it? You know, you're like, well, I don't know. Some people could, I guess, but yeah, a lot of those famous jerk bags. But. I could see, like, uh, Ariana Grande being super mad about Jay-Z. it. Jay-Z. Yeah. I'd, I'd see it from Jay-Z more. I don't know. Um, Immortal Technique would be super... I guess Immortal Technique beat up a guy for selling shirts with his face on it. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a beater upper though. Anyways, what song did you find? Landslide. Well, oh, and the original's uh, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, isn't Fleetwood it? Mac. <laughs> so they're the order of the best version of that song. One, Dixie Chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Two, Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> Three, Fleetwood Mac. All three are good versions, but... But not in that order. Yeah. No, in that. Yeah, no, in that order. Oh, no, in that order. In yeah, that you're, you're right. So, That's funny. My yeah. bad. Nothing sets that off worse than... Remakes? Yeah. Oh and gosh. when you like them. <laughs> when you like the wrong remake. <laughs> Do you know uh, Alien Ant Farm's Smooth Criminal? Yeah. So awesome. Freaking love it. It is and awesome. I was listening to it in the shop, and Dad came in, and he was like, What is this? <laughs> this is terrible! <laughs> I know. I, was like, really? I awesome. like it. I accidentally bought it twice on my Google account because I forgot I already bought it. I don't know. And the, have you heard the Michael Jackson version? It's all right. It's pretty good. But yeah, I've definitely heard the Michael Jackson version. I hadn't for a long time. Oh, really? I don't even knew, think I knew it was a remake, remake when I first heard that song. Oh, so I wasn't as musically inclined as you two. That's fair. But it's it's Michael Jackson. I didn't give it crap. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, he, he came up. He was played places. Why well, he's played on the radio and stuff. He's very famous. That was all. I was just surprised. That's all. Rocky was more into the screamo scene. Again, dude. What was playing in your car on the way over here? His phone. I might not. We be, have very, I might not be willing to put on the internet what I was playing in my car when I was going over. We here. have very different. <laughs> I was watching TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we have very different tastes in music, sir. Yours, sure. yours sure. remains a lot more old school than mine does. Sure, very true. I'm open to that. Very true. Both of you. Yeah, I'm open to that. Pepper. Have you and heard Pebbles mostly in line with my music? Have taste. you heard Thriller? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Did you seek it out? <laughs> that that was the point. Of- Thriller is the like the number one played Halloween song on the planet. That's, that's a good point. Thriller's a bad that's example. That's different. That's different. What about Billie Jean? 
Uh, I have heard it, but I couldn't. I've heard it rare enough that I couldn't sing it right now. Okay. I I just asked. He was one of the greatest selling artists of all time. That that's the only reason I was surprised. But I'm open to you never heard it. Also, that's it. Stop giving me that look. <laughs> you so. don't have to make your point again. <laughs> He's going to. Oh, <laughs> That homosexual pedophile went platinum several times, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's where we're going with it. <laughs> Sorry for the yelling, folks. It's all right. Rocky says it's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind if you yeah. We, the audience, <laughs> forgive you. <laughs> Have you listened to a single podcast? Yeah. Okay. I listen quite a bit. I uh, This podcast? <laughs> yeah, this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two things. Like the sound of my own voice, in case you guys didn't notice. <laughs> and I uh, like to listen for things I could have done better. I see. Yeah. You know? Trying to correct correct things and, and whatnot. And I've I've slacked off, but I listened to the last one and I listened to the grandpa one. Yeah. I like to yeah, I listened to that one too. I like to make sure I did justice to the To the man. Because a lot of times, like, I'll go back through in my mind, remember things I said, and be frustrated with myself, and then I'll go listen to it in the podcast, like, I don't know how else I could have done it. Yeah, sure. Maybe it's mostly just to make me feel better, and maybe I shouldn't feel better, but I do. What'd you think about the old, the big announcement today? New scripture. Dad was right. Oh, so those of you that don't know, this weekend was general conference. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um... Well, let's, should we break it down further than that? If you're a Latter-day Saint, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> Twice a year, you we have a general conference where the entire church meets and listens to the leaders of the church, people we call apostles and prophets. And this, well, the past few have been chock full of new things for our church, and this one was no exception. So, yeah. Um... I don't know, I had a couple of thoughts. Uh, as far as the big announcement from this morning, the new proclamation, that was about, I, I was not surprised by it. It wasn't what I expected, but I wasn't like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. It was, and, and it was really interesting, and, and I think it was handled perfectly and, and, and perfect to make this conference exactly what it was promised. Mm-hmm. Unforgettable. So, Yeah. I concur. Thoughts? Oh. Um, I... He thinks exactly what I said. Mm-hmm. I like. I it. just said yeah. his thoughts. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I really liked it. I. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Did you just? Oh, I thought you just trimmed your mustache, but it looks better from the side than straight on. I guess. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this week's podcast is going to feature just Golden. a picture of Golden's mustache. <laughs> Golden has a side by side one mug shot. Lush one straight on. Beautiful him. beard that I. <laughs> Envious of, so I try and chop it down any chance I get. Just about shaved it off today. Why? I get tired of it. Getting itchy. Because no, yeah, a little bit under here, but uh, it it requires a lot of upkeep. Mm-hmm. And if I keep it, if I keep it full time, I don't do the upkeep because I start to slack and hate it. Sure. So if I shave it for a few months at a time, then I start to hate my clean shaven face. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna grow a big beautiful beard. So I grow out a big beautiful beard and I take care of it. I like I shampoo it every other day, condition it all the time, put oil in it, stuff uh, like that. But right now I haven't shampooed it. Well, I did shampoo it yesterday, but that was the first time in a week, and I haven't put oil in it in like a week and a half, maybe two weeks. So Golden grows more facial hair in one year than I could in 30. So. Potentially than me and Rocky could in 30. Combined, combined. easy. <laughs> Anyways, so I liked the, obviously I liked the, the, the new proclamation, but my big thing is the, uh, and I'm going to have to go back and read it, you know. Read the proclamation. But I really liked that we did the Hosanna show because... Are here. 
we are here. We worship you. Please don't smite us. So, I like that we did that. Except for I don't like that we weren't. Because I thought the prophet said, we'll do the Hosanna shout after the first session. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, so I just laid in my pajamas through like the whole first session. And then right like at the end. four minutes before, I was like, Oh, he's going to do it now. <laughs> so I ran in and put on a white shirt, and I was too late. I just had a white shirt and sweats on mm. to do the Hosanna shout, which may have been less slobby to have just the pajamas on than the <laughs> half and yeah, half. Seriously. <laughs> if you just keep the sweats on, you can pretend to the Lord that you did it on purpose. Yeah. What happened? You get yeah. tired halfway through putting your shirt on? <laughs> but it, uh, it didn't seem to detract from the spirit. So. Yeah. It was a powerful moment, I think, for me. Yeah. I'm with you. I thought it was I thought it was really cool. Although we were standing in my apartment just waving our hands. I think Nate had a dirty dishcloth, so <laughs> it's it literally says clean white handkerchief. <laughs> we were gonna stop, <laughs> Nothing against I Nate. Did, Love Nate. Books closed, so we didn't know where else to go. I guess probably Walmart would have something, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I really like the Hosanna shout, but I do like it a lot better, like, at the conference center. I think that would be... It, wa- yeah, it was weird with just it. three of us. And three people on the TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was weird. But yeah. The whole thing was weird. It was hard to watch the speakers like that, I think. Interesting. Imagine I being one of the speakers. I'm, just because I'm not... Yeah, just because I'm not used to it. And it was so funny because, like... Um, Latter-day Saints are kind of sick of fence for their leaders, which is a good thing, but, and it's not sickle fancy so much as it's, uh, respect, but even like a not funny joke gets a courtesy laugh, you know, <laughs> without <laughs> fail. They, they were like throwing out these jokes <laughs> and waiting for the courtesy laugh and there was just no one there oh, to yeah. laugh. Like, <laughs> Whoa, it's just so awkward. And you're, and you're, you're like, I hope for your sake that you at least got a chuckle from yeah, President like, Nelson. Yeah, back there. Well, Nelson told one of them. I was like, oh, well, <laughs> President. He's pausing for a courtesy laugh and then yeah, didn't was, hear anything. And, mm, it was weird. Yeah, I'm with you. But that's real funny. It's, it's hard to follow a prophet like Hinckley who is legitimately hilarious. Just funny. Yeah. Funny, dude. <laughs> and like, Thomas was up there. Thompson? Thompson. Monson. Monson. <laughs> Thomas S. Monson. There we go. <laughs> Thomas S. Monson was, he was pretty funny, but he wasn't equally. And now it's like, come on, Prez. <laughs> All right. You got this, Nelson. <laughs> Just bring the spiritual moments. Yeah. You don't need to break the tension. Yes. <laughs> I hope that he listens to this. And he's like, and he mentions you in the, I was listening to a small oh, time yeah, podcast. <laughs> yeah, and, fortunately. Uh, pretty <laughs> sacrilegious, but. He can be like, he'd be like, and someone, it was super funny, but zero wisdom. So we're even. <laughs> so we're even. I have tons of wisdom. Not that funny. Yeah, zero wisdom. He's hilarious. Honestly, if he said that, I would die. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we're all just like, that's us. Oh. We definitely said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, at least we made. think we're funny. I don't think he has to worry about what I have to say. You know, like a uh, renowned heart surgeon, prophet of a church. You know, like. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Ironworker, who thinks he's super funny. <laughs> Mr. Welder. Yeah. So, speaking of humor during conference, I have something of a story to tell. Do you guys know who Hank R. Smith is? Golden, you might have heard part of this. Yeah, he's a, he's like a John By the Way type. Correct? Yeah, he's a, he's a motivational speaker. I think he teaches a religion class at BYU. Mm-hmm. Pretty spiritual guy. Super. He's like stupid funny. He is especially funny. when it comes to church things he 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 knows how to be lighthearted about the right stuff and not sure. go too far which anyone in our family can attest we are not great at if we, we, we love crossing that it's hard oh, to yeah. find the line so we just like jump over it as far yeah. as we can he wa- he walks the line very well we know where the line is because we're smashing through the brick wall that's there you know? <laughs> god ah! we're like here the kool-aid man oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so he, uh, every six months for conference, he posts, like, conference memes that he makes up as he's going. He, like, mm-hmm. thinks of these memes, and he'll post them on his Instagram. So right. at the end of the conference, he's super creative, super funny. You end up with two dozen memes or something from mm-hmm. his page alone. 
He posted one today. Hoarders are ready for the Hosanna, Hosanna shout hashtag general conference with a gif of uh, one of the Looney Tunes mm-hmm. hoisting toilet paper into the air. <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm showing them the meme, but I'm explaining it for our listeners. Daphne. And, no. Daffy Duck. Daffy. Maybe? Yeah. Daffy, Daffy Duck? Duck? No. This it's is Daffy one of Daffy Duck. Is it Daffy Duck? I just was confused at the Daphne. I got mixed up. <laughs> Girl, no. Anyways, we digress. <laughs> <laughs> boy, duck. Uh, with the caption, my wife says I'm irreverent. Mm-hmm. And naturally, Mom and Pebbles went in through the comments we were reading them. So we're going on a comments rabbit hole, oh, folks. Comments. Yeah. Oh. Um, and most people are like, oh, that's hilarious. I get it. Because hoarders have a lot of toilet paper, especially with all the stuff going on with the toilet paper in the quarantine. Everybody hoarding toilet paper. Sure. It's a hilarious meme. Timely, well delivered. That's my opinion. This is not a comment. I don't get it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I'm bothered that you don't get it. <laughs> I get it. It was just a joke. Um, and a lot of the comments were of the same opinion I was. They're like, oh, that's hilarious. Oh, thank you for sharing. Well played, I was Hank. literally thinking the same thing, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but some people were quite negative. Oh. And we'll find one of them and laugh about it. Okay. I, I did think that it was... Oh. Interesting and good that President Nelson prefaced the Hosanna shout by saying, members of the media, this is a very sacred and mm-hmm. solemn uh, thing. What did he call it? Or, Agreed. Because it's not an ordinance. Act, maybe? Action, perchance? Event. I can't remember. Yeah, event is probably what he said. Shout, I found one. Proceed. She is right. Taking spiritual lightly is not right. Sorry you should not take the welcoming of our Lord as a matter of joke. Not cool. I love my Savior and he will come. <laughs> no, <laughs> dude. <laughs> and then he gets all these people in the comments that are like, what's your deal? He's making a joke? <laughs> and like all these people and responding to this person. He barely took the event lightly. He was making fun of oh, hoarders more gosh, than anything. Yeah, yeah uh, agreed. And... and Oh, we'll get. To, I'm I'm looking for a specific comment that seriously. I sent it to Pebbles during the meeting, and she lost control. She started laughing in the middle of the meeting. It's that bad. Um. I, it is important to separate the sacred from what is common. I don't want to be thinking about toilet paper as I worship and call upon call upon God to come save me. I don't. I want it to be a sacred experience because I treat it as one. Hmm. He's getting all these. Oh, this is it though. The, uh, Go ahead. Why are you on Facebook, Dan, if you want this to be so sacred? I thought the same exact thing. Really? Get on Facebook and and do the Hosanna shout. He's like, oh, I'm... He waved his hand. I'm responding. This this butthead. This son of perdition. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Here it is. This is the one. Let's have it. Dan. I usually really love what you post, but that offering is not appropriate. The Hosanna shout is a sacred thing that happened during the dedication of the Kirtland Temple. Something used to wipe poop is not the same as a handkerchief, which can wipe tears of joy. (laughs) Your wife is right. After tonight, you will likely realize why. I will listen to the prophet and just use my hand if I can't find one. (laughs) (laughs) So, from this we can conclude, you can't wipe tears of joy (laughs) with toilet paper, and if, if things get dicey, you run out, you can't, can't use a handkerchief, use handkerchief to, wipe. <laughs> to wipe your bum. Wipe yeah. poop. <laughs> so, <laughs> was that by uh, take themselves too seriously? That's I can't think of That's her rough. name. My, my burn is ruined because I can't think of her name. I like to imagine that President Nelson saw that and went, "Oh, that's a good one. I'm glad he did that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know he has a Maybe. sense of humor, even if he's not great at jokes. My guess would be that if he didn't laugh at it, he didn't see it because he's he's the prophet. He doesn't got time for that. He's busy. No, because he's doing what? If you're that pious that you can't take that joke, get off Facebook on Sunday. What are you doing? Are you kidding me? Greatly concur. To be fair, I saw it on Instagram on Sunday, which I'm, I was on. You, you laughed at the joke? 
You laughed at the joke, but if you're that high and mighty that you can't laugh at that joke, get off your Facebook on Sunday. Yeah, indeed. Just unfollow any comedic Instagram. Mm. Agreed. It's it was. I thought it was. That is funny. funny. Though. Those are some funny. Ones. Well done, Chad. Shannon. Was Sorry. that from Shannon Lottie? Sorry, I got. Go ahead. That's all. Who's Shannon Lottie? A really p- pious woman mm. that's really just a piece of crap. Uh-oh. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's not from from her. Do you know her? No. Am I out, out on a joke, or is it just? Or is I it thought so, you it's guys just knew. It's uh, one of my ex girlfriend's mom. Oh, oh. yeah, that sounds right. yeah. Oh, you okay. guys know. Yeah. The story goes: I dumped her, and her mom sent me like a fifty-page email telling me how I was unworthy of the priesthood because oh, I dumped her yeah, daughter. Daughter. That's, that's rough. I do remember that. Yeah, I think it was Shannon. Lottie. <laughs> <laughs> it was Shannon Lottie that posted that comment. Uh, shout out. At Shannon Lottie. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so. I've been wanting to start a new segment. Dope. So, well, I'm going to start it now. We've talked about it, but I'm going to surprise you with it. Okay. It's called Jokes of the Prophets. And this is where, like, Ooh. this is where you'll get the intro fitting, music. Fitting week to start. Jokes of the Prophets. Jokes of the Prophets. Okay. Okay. Introduced. We'll, we'll record record over that. I'll put an actual. <laughs> this one comes from President Packer in 2009. I know he's not the prophet, but he's a prophet. It works. If you're listening okay, and you care that much, uh, we're the wrong guys to talk really, to. Really? Anyway, never mind. We can talk about it later. So what I'm doing when I listen to my uh, conference talks, um, I try to daily. I often fail, but... Anytime I hear a joke that actually makes me laugh, I'm going to record it, share it on the podcast. This one's from Packer, 2009. A man walks into a doctor to fix his inferiority complex. After much testing, the doc says, I have bad, I have good news. You don't have a complex. You are inferior. (laughs) (laughs) That was a good one. Wow, that's a surprisingly harsh burn. (laughs) Profit. It's a very good burn. Yeah. <laughs> that was jokes from the prophets. Same uh, we're done. We're gonna, we're gonna have we're, to work on the outgoing. <laughs> the first one was way better, dude. We are we are produced here, dude. We're we're doing good. Very good. Because we had a <laughs> intro and outro music for each segment. Yeah. Do we have well, to start thinking of segments? I think that's now? the first time we've had a segment. I was so. gonna say we, we've got a couple more in the works, but we're waiting on uh, somebody to pull the trigger. Mm. What do you have in the works? That's me. How's my driving? <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna share it on there. We'll tell you after. Oh, fair enough. But we're excited. Look forward to that. It's coming. How's my driving? The segment. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might never come. <laughs> it might never come. It takes a lot. Of It'll come. It's I'll, a funny concept. I'll focus on it. It's a good it's idea. A I should work. do it. It could get us some listeners that don't only listen because they love us, you know. Thanks, Noah. Thank you, Noah. And James. And James. <laughs> James. Thank you, Noah and Uncle James and Mom and Dad. Pebbles, if I didn't shout you out, don't get your feelings hurt. Keep listening. We love you, too. We just, <laughs> we just know who's really loyal about listening. <laughs> also, the other thing is a lot of our loyal listeners are starting at the beginning, and they get bored of us before they get to 19, so... Yeah. So no, nobody, no. nobody that that has started listening, they're gonna, they're not gonna hear this shout out. So. I think that maybe once we get like fifty episodes in, people will realize, oh, I'm not starting over now. I'll just start here or something. I don't know that, that that's the case. Catherine yeah. just barely started a podcast that has like three hundred episodes, and she started at episode <clears throat> one. But what, is it sequential though? Like, do you have to? What's the no. podcast about? It's called My Favorite Murder. Uh, better shout us out, My Favorite Murder Girls, because I just shouted you out. Um, and they just talk about murders. But it's not. I don't think just it's in, sequ- just sequential. Second. That's weird. I Every once in a while they have like two part episodes, but they're each stand alone, except how, for the two parts. How often do they post the. I don't know. Probably I don't once know a week. About the, Cause I, I think it is once a Adam week. Adam Carolla does daily and like he locks his episodes after like two weeks. You can't see him older than two weeks unless really? you pay for a membership. <laughs> oh, which. But it, I don't know. I just. But even with Adam Curl, even going back two weeks in time, you're never going to catch up. Because two hours of content every day. Yeah, I just look at, like, I look for the comedians that I know are funny, you know. 
Yeah. And that's how I go about it. But sure. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I get that. Actually, I was noticing the other day. Mm-hmm. Our first podcast is up to 83 views. Really? It keeps getting watched. And nothing else? And then they don't listen to anything else? You should delete that one, dude. It was horrible. We sucked. And we're way better now. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me. Actually, I think most people try the first two. Because 83 and 57, and then we average about 30 after that. Oh, cow. I just found out that my favorite comedian, not just, but like within about a month ago i found out that my favorite comedian in the world has a podcast he's got like 183 episodes so for sure may start listening to podcasts yeah, his name is dan cummins mm. shadows only heard of he's him because i talk about him i really like him have you heard his stuff uh i just think i've heard some of it when you talk comedians with golden dan cummins will come up without fail every time baby big fan every time huh? Big oh, my son actually started a vlog. Oh yeah, Carter is awesome. Yeah, Carter is. I subscribed on. We'll have to have him on for some. When he decides what he's gonna do with it, we'll have him on for an interview. Yeah, sounds good. Speaking of, when's Noah's wife coming on? You've been called out, Haley. Hashtag, you've been called out, Haley. I don't know. I got no idea. Haley, I haven't heard from her. We need you to share your readers. If they can read a blog, they can listen to this, for sure. They can do both at the same time. For sure it will be after quarantine. <laughs> As your inspiration, if these idiots can do a podcast and I can do a blog, I believe is a direct quote. As your inspiration. Or it might just be how I heard it in my share brain. Your Whatever you actually said to me, that's what I heard in my brain. <laughs> if these idiots can do it, I can start a blog. So, <laughs> I'm not sure what you really said. Don't be mad. <laughs> um, no, I think it will be after quarantine. For sure, she's oh. uh she's quarantining pretty she's pretty pretty hardcore about she's that quarantine. Should we talk about that? Yeah, let, let's talk about it. Um, so for those of our listeners who don't know, we don't quarantine that well because we're considered necessary functions. Golden works doing internet or fixing in, internet, and Rocky and I were construction. It's I a necessary employment to expendable. <laughs> Or expendable, expendable employment. talent, we can be replaced easily if we die of COVID nineteen. So, because of that, our impression of, I wish you wouldn't carve my candle up. Wasn't me. Sorry, bro. Our impression of. But not uh, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. This quarantine is not the same as most people's. We haven't been trapped in the house. We go to work every day. Am I am I on base saying that? <clears throat> Yes, for me. Yeah. And, and yeah. And I don't have a wife with kids at home that are quarantined like Rocky does. So. Well, I guess that does give Rocky some of that perspective, also. Yeah. That wasn't what I was thinking. But do you have more to add? No, that's all. That that that's all for me. From it, it, if anything we say comes across as insensitive, insensitive. That's where we're coming I from. Think, was it you that looked it up? Probably. The other day, there were seven deaths in Utah. We're up to eight now. Eight. Out of how many cases? In the United States or in Utah? In Utah. Utah's like, Utah was Two, like 1,200. 2,000 maybe? Yeah, 2,000. Tap pulled up. Something like Let me that. get it. Because that is way less than the, like, 2% death rate they were. They were projecting. Um, and it's not... Uh, a 104 year old World War II veteran just recovered oh, from I COVID 19. So it's not nearly as deadly as they are saying it is. So I don't know. When do we stop taking the economy, though? To... Do you know Steve Schrader? Mm-hmm. I know you know Steve Schrader. <laughs> Uh, Steve Schrader is a dear family friend. We all love him, I think, except for mom and mom. Like really loves him. Oh, <laughs> we're um, like we're like an eight on the love scale, and mom's a ten on the love <laughs> scale for Steve Schrader. <laughs> it's a joke for mom. And uh, Steve, I hope that you listen to this and we misquote you. Whatever Golden's about to say, I hope you didn't know. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to quote him, but um, I 
I follow him on Facebook, mm-hmm. and he has said very similar things. Yeah. About like today, he hashtagged faith over fear or something mm-hmm. like that, and he also talked about how tanking the economy is going to be worse for more people than. I agree, hundred percent. Than getting the COVID nineteen. Hundred percent. I mean, we're construction workers, so we're we're still working, but we won't be if the economy yeah. tanks. Yep. You know? um, and a lot of construction workers aren't. They shut down the Facebook project. No way. Yeah, that's probably five hundred freaking guys out of a job. You know. You think it's only five hundred? Where's it he, at? He's talking about this Facebook job. The f- the, the Facebook construction site. Oh, where you guys are? No, no we're at Amazon. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, when I worked down at the Intel factory in Mesa, we had like 8,000 guys. Oh, wow. I, mm, I could be wrong. And I, I feel like the Facebook would be I don't know if it's large. a server farm, though. Oh, uh, okay. It could be. Intel uh, wasn't a server farm either. It but, wasn't? What was it? Uh, I believe what I'm allowed to tell you is that Jeez. it's a chemical factory. Oh, yeah, you're kind of... Yeah, get out of here. I signed some Don't NDAs, so I, 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 can't, I can't get into any details or anything, but I can tell you it's a chemical factory. So right now we're at 0.005% death rate in Utah. And what's the flu, like point? I think it's 0.1. I think it's close. Right. I don't know. I, it's got people scared, too, like... Dad's real nervous about it. Uncle is he? Bob, oh my gosh, dude! People were hugging his family at the funeral. He was yelling at him for it, in, in a joking way. But it was like, uh, but it doesn't feel like a real joke, Bob. But it's like, okay, well, I mean, they could catch the flu and die from that just as easy, apparently. You know, so far, nationwide we're point zero three percent. I don't know. I don't like it, dude. I don't like the way it's being used. Concur. And I don't like the way the WHO is starting to look in it. World Health Organization? Well, Japan calls it the uh, Chinese Health Organization nowadays because that's how corrupt it is. Did you hear about that Mm -hmm. guy that... Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what video you're talking about. Did you hear about it? No, negative. This WHO official was in an interview. This... They, they talked about China, and this girl asked about the, the, the Thailand, um, or not Thailand, what was that? Taiwan. Taiwan, yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah, the, the, re, the, the so, response in Taiwan yeah. compared to the response in China. Mm-hmm. And the guy first pretended like he couldn't hear. He's like, sorry, I didn't hear that question. What was it? Or no, he said, sorry, I didn't hear that question. Let's move to the next one. And she's like, well, no, I want to go back to this one. He's like, no, let's just do the next one. Huh. And then she said, well, well, I mean, what about Taiwan's response, though? And then he, sh- you see him reach up and shut off his his video. Thing. Yeah, his video. It's like a Zoom meeting or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they get him back. And she says, well, what about Taiwan's response? He says, we've already talked about China. Because China thinks that Taiwan is a part of China. Right. Whereas the U.S. recognizes Taiwan as a separate country. A sovereign nation. Oh. And this American guy from the WHO was reciting the communist... Chinese rhetoric. Propaganda Dope. about Taiwan. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh. So maybe it's a good thing that that crap's being exposed, but it's like, uh, this is getting a lot shadier than, you know... What else are they covering up? What else are they, you know? They're that they're that much in China's back pocket. And we don't. China's been lying to us about about it the whole time. Yeah. Shady, bro. Yeah, maybe China's. Maybe it's, you know, China's like, all right, let's all just go down together, you know, like we talked about last week. Yeah. I don't know. It's. That's it's weird. weird. I don't know. Something interesting about this. And that is Pandemic. that is at the risk of sounding racist, which I'm not. That's a very Asian or Eastern culture thing, like death before dishonor type stuff. So oh, they're like, gotcha. we're taking you out. Yeah, we're going down too. But yeah, death to the yeah, filthy American. Weird, co- like, uh, 
Japan and Sweden have very Bits. little restrictions, and they have like the same rates that everyone else does. I don't like the way the media is causing panic about this. And in my Wait, mind, it's, our media, they would never, to, ever cause panic. It's to <laughs> cause a, a shadow on the orange man's presidency, which, you know, is frustrating for me. Cause Do you love the orange I man? I love the orange man so far. Yeah. He loves the orange man. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, you know, I don't like it. I don't. Yeah. And I'm starting, like, I haven't done anything different. I still go to the gym every day. Is your gym still open? Week. So, because they're a 24-hour operation, they can send all their play- employees home. We all have key cards, so we can just use our key cards to get in. Mm. Um, I mean, everyone's washing everything down. You know, everyone's pretty good about it, but I'm just like, I don't know. I don't think that we're, I think we're handling this wrong. Poorly? If, you know, now all of a sudden the media can, because I think swine flu killed like 250,000 people in this country. It was was a similar death rate to what we have now. Are you serious? Yeah, nothing. That is, I mean. Nothing ever happened. Every human life is valuable. Nothing ever happened, but the the economy was already in shreds and, and Obama was president. Now the economy's strong as heck. Orange man's president. And the media's like, oh, Corona's going to kill your grandpa and your babies. Yeah, that's a good point. And at the same time, Russia and Saudi Arabia are flooding the market with oil that we don't need. They're tanking their, the price of fuel, the price of oil, which is going to put American companies out of business. So three countries that Trump has stood up to are all working, working to destroy to, the con- the economy underneath them. Seems weird, right? Yeah, that's a good point. 151,000 deaths globally from swine. Globally. Oh, is that all it was? Uh, well, Jeez. they only have an estimate because it wasn't handled the same way. Hmm. So they estimate it was 151,000 to 575,000. So somewhere in that range. 250. Was close. 250, yeah, it, globally. But for reference... Uh, Coronavirus has killed 4,700 globally. Yeah. 4,700? Yeah, that's... And now, and we're locked down? Yeah. In a booming economy? Yeah. Under the orange man that everyone's terrified of, but for some reason all his crazy antics work? (laughs) Calls, Calls North Korean leader Rocket Man, and everyone loses their minds... And for the first time in like 25 years, the guy comes to the table to talk about peace. It doesn't and, go anywhere, but he still did. Well, and not only that, lets an American president inside North Korea. It's yeah. been locked, yeah. like locked down forever. And then tells China, we're not doing this anymore. We're going to tariff you. Everyone's like, oh, trade war. And I was on board. I was like, yeah, we can't be having a trade war with the Chinese. What are you talking about? Next thing we know, we're rewriting NAFTA. <laughs> and all the, or is it, no, not NAFTA, uh, the the Asian version of NAFTA, mm-hmm. you know, like, okay, well, maybe that's working. <laughs> and everyone's like, well, you know, I just don't like his tweets. I'm like, you don't like his tweets, huh? Unfollow, Unfollow him. So Unfollow. let's say there was another president Don't be on your phone there. during general conference. <laughs> 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 let's say... <laughs> Yeah. That's a good joke, though. Let's, Hold on. <laughs> We're to bring it all back around. Let's say there was another president in there, you know, who never tweeted. Perchance a Democrat? No. Okay. No. Bush for sure does it, did this. Mm-hmm. Never tweeted. Only used generalities when he spoke. Never was specific about anything. Never stood up for himself or for anything that you attacked on him. Yeah. And, and you'd be like, well, these... These presidents, these politicians all use double speak and they, they lie out their teeth. Like, okay, well, this guy gets up at 2 in the morning and speaks his mind on Twitter. He's the exact opposite of everything you hate in politicians and you hate his guts for it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Mr. President, 
please keep tweeting, sir. And to be <laughs> every fair, time you come, he's a loose cannon on Twitter. A loose cannon. Every time you, you have call, no idea what he's going to say. That. Every time you call Kim Jong Un, Rocket Man, and Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas, I jump for joy. <laughs> Continue. I sir. think I think the Pocahontas one is even better than the Rocket Man one. Dude, oh, and I've said it before on this podcast. All right, fighters suck as people. They are not fun to deal with. They're abrasive. Uh, their spouses usually don't like them very much. Uh, they don't have very many friends. They piss off everyone around them. But they fight. And they win. Not always. So do you want a fighter? Or do you not? Because it's hard to like a fighter, but at least he's fighting. Right? I just don't get it. I don't care what people's problem is. He's standing up for something. Yeah. You have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Yeah. And he gets up at 3 in the morning, sits on the toilet, and stands for something all morning. (laughs) You know what I think would be even better than that? If he's just completely unassociated with his Twitter, he hires a guy to run for him. (laughs) And this guy, and the guy's like, can I say this? He's like, Yeah. Sure. Sure. Do I, I don't care. care. <laughs> <laughs> right, what you want. That would make it even better. For, for sure. For sure. Stop worrying about how presidential he looks, folks, because he's fighting. Yeah. He's, he's he's fighting. Doing a lot of things that are good. In a way that hasn't been done in a long time. He's fighting for freedom. I'm actually going to whip that back around to the church. Let's hear Um because it's it's a by their fruits ye shall know them type situation, and President Trump's what are we at? Forty six. Oh dang! And President Trump's fruits so far are, at least in regards to his presidency, are good. Mm-hmm. You know, they're fruits that are sweet to the taste. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just was thinking about this during conference about the church and how their fruits are mostly good almost entirely good i'm mm-hmm. sure there are some things that are like ooh, mm-hmm. maybe could have handled that better you know and sure you know for the most part i would say their fruits are good and then at the same time all these people that are leaving mm-hmm. how have you guys quit things before i'm sure you have like i quit playing piano sure and also me yeah shadow quit playing piano rocky Kind of plays cello, but kind of quit playing cello. And quit playing piano. And quit playing piano. Mm-hmm. And I walked away from the piano, and I never looked back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I did end up looking back, but I just got back into playing piano. Wait, but... wait, 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 wait. So when you quit the piano, you didn't turn around and start talking smack on her. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I didn't, piano. yeah, I did not talk smack on everyone who played the piano. In fact, what a, lot a of them... stupid hobby. I'd be ashamed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I quit playing football. And I did hate on football players a little, but that's because the majority of football players are kind of dicks. But I never was actively like, football's a terrible sport. And and anyone who is associated with football is being deceived Mm -hmm. and brainwashed. (laughs) But you look at all the people that leave the church, and not all of them, but plenty of them, at least go through a phase where they're like, the church is just straight evil. Everything about it is bad. Like... Okay. Well, is everything about it bad? Mm-hmm. I mean, let's look at all of the aid that they send. And yeah, one of my favorite "quote unquote" controversies within the church was when some whistleblower was like, "They have one point two billion dollars. They're oh, not doing no. anything 100 with hundred billion. Yeah, they have a hundred billion dollars. They're not doing anything with it. It's like, yeah. How else can it be ready when we need?" To fund when some sort global, of relief. When there's a global pandemic. Yeah, when there's coronavirus. Three, three months later. How much does it cost to keep all those temples open? You know, it's, they got expenses. Yeah, there's plenty of expenses. It was just a stupid argument to me. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, that is. Yeah, and the, the argument I heard was $32 billion. My, I, my, yeah, my I brother-in-law think. brought it up. Yeah. You know, they got $32 billion in the bank. And he was like, looked at me like, isn't that ridiculous? And I'm like... The kingdom okay. of God on earth has $32 billion. That's good news, sir. That is good news. <laughs> you said that to him? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I thought about it later, okay. of course, you know. Yeah, yeah. I just looked at him like, 
Uh, okay. Well, yeah. And? <laughs> but, uh... Do you know how many members they have that pay 10% mm-hmm. of every paycheck they yeah. get? Like, yeah. whoop. Yeah, the only... I've heard... And every time I bring up the fruits of the church, I always get drawn back to this one statistic that says one in four Utah homes is... Has domestic violence. Has domestic violence involved in it. Wow. Or rape of some sort or something. That's that's the argument of the fruit you, by the fruit and you shall know them. I just don't see that. The argument statistic. against fruits yeah. by their fruits yeah, you shall know them? Well, if that was the case, then one, one, one in four Utah men be a domestic abuser. Which I guess the, the national average is one in five. Oh, so it's more in Utah. Yeah, and I, I'm like, I don't see that playing out anecdotally you know I don't Mm -hmm. uh, one in four like I go through the houses on my block so there's eight houses two of them have experienced I'm like "Mm." and so I'm wondering how do they count it yeah what and they say well it's because the the patriarchy in the church they you know men think that they have the the authority to beat their women because they have the priesthood and women are allowed to have it. Oh, dang. Yeah, that guy clearly knows the doctrine yeah, of the church super well. It's dope. But, Sarcasm, folks. Yeah. So, if that was true, but I just, I mean, you have to know how they measure it. Yeah. I, I'm, I just don't see That's the hard thing about statistics enough, yeah. is they can like, be skewed yeah, any way that you want. Yeah. Well, and... They're measuring, they have similar statistics for the coronavirus. Uh-huh. Oh, domestic abuse rates are up because people are quarantined. And I've looked into it and I can't find any, like, <laughs> that, like people are throwing out these statistics all over social media. I'm like, where are these statistics are you coming? getting that? Who's, like, if they're quarantined. Who's going door to door saying, are you beating your wife now that you're quarantined? And who's saying yes? Yeah. 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 What? Like, I, potentially they have gone up. I could buy that because... Abusive men are suddenly home with their families 24 hours a day. Sure. I, I could buy that. That's a possibility. Yeah. But who's telling people? Like, yeah. who's like, oh, yeah. As soon as I got stuck home in quarantine, started hitting my wife. No, like, the, <laughs> the pattern of abuse, and I'm, I'm not trying to make light of that. Abuse happens. It's wrong. Yeah. Uh, and, and the church has been very clear about that, that it's wrong. For those of um, you that... <laughs> dude, I don't know. I'm like, the guy's like, I don't know. I just... You know, I had this punching bag work and it blew off steam and I can't go there anymore, so I just hung my wife up by her feet and <laughs> punch her every night. Is that abuse? Is that, does that count? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> but I just I don't get it. like the oh, statistic yeah. I don't get where it's coming from and it's the same thing with the I because I looked into it, Rocky and I have had this conversation before and I've looked into it. I where is it coming from? Where are these statistics, these abuse statistics coming from? Are they uh oh we had this many abuse victims come in. Now we have to adjust for the population and yeah. and, okay, as, and estimate a, from there. But, but they're suddenly assuming that every abuse victim goes to the hospital. First well, no, they're they're assuming that even the ones that don't suddenly there's you know this many unproved cases of abuse Uh-oh. because not all of them go to the hospital, and we have to estimate for those ones. Right. Well, that's a that's an unknown number. Yeah, you, that, that they're, they're estimating for variable X. Yeah. yeah, and the best is uh, um, the last time I had that argument was on Instagram. Dope. Because I love to argue with people on Instagram. Yeah. Even though I don't have Instagram anymore, but uh, they, uh, <laughs> I I said the guy was like. I was saying something about the church, and he was like, "Yo, oh, you're so naive. All these Mormons are so naive. They're just, they're just little drones, you know." I'll, and I'm like, "Yeah." And then, then, then that statistic came up, and I said, "So you're telling me that every fourth house on my street is a domestic violence? Is is there's a there's a wife beater in or a rapist? And I'm the naive one? Like you don't know your neighbors that well to know like." All right. Oh, I mean, yeah, there's not, you know, and I get it. He's got a temper. Well, and sometimes it happens, and, and nobody ever knows for 30 years. Like, yeah, those cases are pretty rare. And Usually it's, uh, all right, she's coming to church with black eyes, and uh, and nobody says anything because she should leave, you know. 
that's what people think. Sure. And that's it's it's easy to go that way because you don't have to confront an abuser who are typically scary men. But and it's uh, they're afraid to say something. Yeah, it's pretty sure. rare that you sure. don't know something's going on. So yeah. what he's trying to tell you is that one in four men in Utah hit their women below the belt. <laughs> or in the stomach <laughs> exclusively. Don't go for the face at all. Yeah. You know, well, or the arms. If I had to guess that one in four men in Utah were abusers, they they definitely go for love blows because they are pansies, bro. Like <laughs> one in four. Of them are like, My, uh, well, I'd hit her, but she'd kick the crap she'd out of me. me <laughs> my immediate clapback when you first said that statistic, mm-hmm. I, my immediate clapback was. Counting you, one in four men in Utah are not LDS. So what are you trying to tell me, bud? There you (laughs) go. And maybe it's, uh, Utah is predominantly Mormon, but not 100%. I don't, it's not one in four, it's like 48% now. Is LDS? Yeah. Is it strictly domestic violence or is it abuse in any form? Abuse. I I, I think that the statistic I was told was abuse in any form. And it included and rape. up like, how do you quantify the emotional abuse? And it, it was like, all right, dude. So he was white knighting for the feminists. You what? Know. He was a social justice warrior yeah, yeah. that was a wannabe feminist? Yeah. Because that the patriarchy me. is ruining this society. Down with the patriarchy. I mean, the patriarchy built the society, but whatever. And now they're ruining it. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and because of the patriarchy... He has the ability to hate the patriarchy and not get his dang head cut off. <laughs> That's right. All this being said, if you are a victim of any kind yeah. of abuse, get help. Yeah. Get help. Yeah. But we're, we're not trying to make light of abuse. True. By any means. It does exist. And it's not okay. We're simply questioning where these statistics come from. And making fun of that dude that <laughs> pretends like... He knows like I'm the naive one. Yeah, and the, the, the church is the problem in all yeah, abuse yeah. cases in Utah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Thank disclaimer you. after the fact. Thanks, yeah. bro. Appreciate the disclaimer, Shadow. Yeah, spoiler alert. He'll write it in the description. Oh, no, he won't. You'll get screwed. He doesn't do <laughs> any descriptions. <laughs> Once in a while, I do. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a... That might be a good one to have your wife on, too. Maybe she's got some stats. Does she big on the patriarchy things or no? No. I thought she was a feminist. Um, she's, she's a more a feminist when it suits her. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry, she, Catherine. She, that joke was at your expense. She's a feminist until it comes to holding her own doors and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't listen. No, she. I would call her a true feminist because she's not a down with the patriarch or patriarchy feminist she's more about completely equal rights and but does she feel like there's rights that she doesn't have no and that's why she isn't like a so job so she's claimed victory and walked away is what you're saying yeah exactly and um me and her the last time we discussed it me and her both talked about how the wage gap is a myth sure and again it's skewed statistics that everyone is taking as fact Mm mm-hmm because most of the time women don't want to do the same job as men. Yeah. Most of the time women take maternity leave and they work part time. And so they factor all of these women that are only working 20 hours a week against the men that are working 40 hours a week to support their wives. And they're like, women are paid less. <laughs> no, they're actually not. Dude. Yeah. I'm all about women's rights. Me too. But we've been, we gave them the right to vote in like 1920. Yeah. The country's been diving since. So. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the roaring 20s? Have we had anything roaring since then? <laughs> I, uh, I have an interesting thought to say about that. This that was, was a joke, me. women. Get, <laughs> calm down. It was a joke. This was a thought that was shared with me that I don't necessarily agree with, but it made me laugh. It gave me a good chuckle. Um, my buddy had a professor, strong libertarian, who said women shouldn't have the right to vote. That's the worst decision we made in this country. Mm-hmm. And this whole class, of course, was like, what? How can you say that? And he goes, here's why. When women got the right to vote, most of them were not taxpaying citizens. And because they didn't pay taxes, 
They were voting for things that cost taxpayers money. Mm. They were voting in programs that cost taxpayers money, but it wasn't their money. They were spending other people's money. Spending their husband's money. We need to fix it so that only taxpayers pay or can vote, or only property owners can vote. I don't know about property owners. I can get behind taxpayers. That's what that's what the founding fathers wanted. I know property vote. So I'm I I could go either way, but the, the the argument for private property is it's also an incentive to own property. The more, That's a good point. The more property owners we have, the less people we have willing to give up their property to the government. So yeah, but so only gun owners can vote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> it's an interesting thought. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. I think that we should give people some guns, you know, but not all the guns. You know. What ones would you ban? Weird. Rocky I took a know. way just, different route than he usually just does. Just the super cool ones. <laughs> yeah. If it looks too that, cool, banned. Like if you can chop a tree down with it. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like the ones that can shoot 100 round magazines mm-hmm. per second. Yeah. Yeah. The United States Senator said that one. This is a ghost gun. It's a semi-automatic rifle that shoots 100 clip magazines per second. Very educated on guns, <laughs> aren't you, Senator? That's Did you so see many. the one where the <laughs> Senator from California... It's the same the, guy. The, the What'd he do? The fellow that said... No. Oh, no. hundred thousand <laughs> marines on this. No, it's eight thousand on, 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 on the island. Right? Of it's, is it gonna capsize? <laughs> Dip over? <laughs> Dude, that gentleman. Oh, so, he was from. Uh, was it the same guy? I'm pretty sure. What's his name? I can't. I don't know. I can't remember. His He's name. from California, right? Or no, uh, no, it's not deep south, guy. Tennessee or something, Kentucky maybe. I can't. Remember. Never seen water Mississippi. in his life. Yeah, Never Mississippi. Never seen the ocean in his life. I mean, but he. Uh, the best part about that video. Look it up. The island of Guam, tip over, capsized. Look it up. It's an interview with a senator, and he talks, and behind him, you can see all these generals cracking up behind him. But they're like, because they have no idea how to respond. And they're like, lifetime military guys, they don't like break composure easy. And so they're like... (laughs) I'll have to look it up. I haven't watched it. It's awesome. It's a great video, folks. Look it up. The island of Guam, tip over, capsize. Dude, how it's can old. you... It is. He got reelected after that. Of course he did. Henry Calvin, I think it's a different guy. Than because no one, one in the world, no one in his constituency watched his videos. That's why we keep reelecting people like Mitt Romney and why Orrin Hatch was a senator for years. years. Yeah. Represented Hank Johnson. He was a, he was a, he wasn't Hank a Johnson. senator. He was a. Member of the House of Representatives, but um, yeah, it, yeah, it's weird that these people get back in. But then again, we keep voting in Mitt Romney, so we can't complain uh, too much. It's it's Senator oh, Georgia. Kevin. Hank Johnson was Georgia, not Georgia. But Kevin they, D. Leon was the one I was talking about. Dude, there's there's resistance to the Mitster though. Still signs Good. up saying, "Hey Mitt, please resign." So Good. You gotta go, Mitt. You've You've Here's the question: Is that welcome. fire gonna last no. four years? No, no, we're stuck with him until he's done. That's yep. the way it goes in this state. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's the problem because religion isn't enough qualifications to be a good senator, and we elected Mitt. Not we, they elected Probably Mitt. On my guess would be everyone that commented on that on that meme about how, <laughs> how upsetting okay. it was voted yes for Mitt Romney. Voted, Mitt Romney. <laughs> voted for Mitt Romney. Would be my guess. Definitely. You might be right. Might All right. Be right. This is this turned into a real ranty one for me, which is kind of rare. I don't go off on rants too often. I was glad to hear it, bro. So it was a good rant. I'm going to... You went to town. Went to work. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. But seriously. <laughs> Stay classy, Los Angeles. Common sense gun control. You know? Common sense. <laughs> Let's just have common sense, bro. You knock it off. <laughs> you don't believe that. You're going to no, confuse our listeners. I do. Noah, I'm a big supporter of common sense gun control. I don't think anyone should have a tank in their driveway. Liar! Relax, Noah. Noah! <laughs> I love that you address one listener. Noah doesn't like my stance on guns. I'm obviously. Mm. I assumed that's why you were calling Sounds like he out. doesn't like a lot of my stances. We should have had that guy on. We need to. Let's do it. 
Noah, this is a call out. You're coming on the podcast Super soon. Super fan Noah. Oh, Bible. and uh, Hogan, you're also coming on soon, too. I thought that was this week, so guess I was wrong. Yeah, we've run into some coordinating issues, which wow. is that I didn't coordinate it. The issue is I did not coordinate it. Shadow has a lot of responsibility on this podcast. We have zero, and we hold it to we hold his feet over the fire. Like, yeah, come we're on, so bro. disappointed. Get on in it. Though. I don't know how it gets <laughs> We can barely show up here on time with Shadow. We're like, Shadow, we need this done. We need this. And he's like, All right, guys, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get there. I'll, <laughs> I'll get do there. it. <laughs> Shadow just like that, too. All whiny and sad. I'm it's sorry, true. guys. I'll do it. It's a good thing you don't have a machine gun or you'd cut my head off with it right now. <laughs> that dope. Wow, dude. Because if you have a tank, you have to use it. Bro. I've always wanted to shoot a 50 cal machine. Just gun. like if marijuana is legal, you have to smoke it. Man. Dude, are we going for a two hour episode? Because I just thought of something. Oh, you boy. Think... We're back in, folks. You, you thought we were winding down, but we tricked you. Actually, oh, maybe that's not appropriate to share. My Let's patriarchal say. blessing does that. It winds down at the end, and then the patriarch like picks back up. Gets second wind. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. And Dad even commented after. He's like, Dude. oh, you got a couple extra paragraphs. Let's today. do an episode where we all read our patriarchal blessings. <laughs> <on Mac. laughs> Just kidding. Uh, President Nelson listened to that one for sure. So, Because <laughs> we decided he's listening, you know. Marijuana gets illegalized. Sure. Illegalized? You're talking about like in the 60s or whatever? I don't know when it was. I don't have any any historical knowledge on this. I just know it got illegalized at some point. Mm-hmm. Marijuana gets illegalized. And shortly thereafter, I don't know. I don't know if it's shortly thereafter. I don't know if it's a long time after. But at some point, the um, word of wisdom becomes commandment. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of um, talks on the word of wisdom referring to marijuana. Do you think if marijuana hadn't been illegalized that the the church's view on marijuana would be the same? I have to assume that it would be. Uh, because the church doesn't operate according to the laws of the land. They operate according to a higher law. So I, I kind of have to assume they would be. And even now, when marijuana is becoming legalized, the church has come out and said marijuana is still against the word of wisdom. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting uh, one. I'm not a bishop. But... You are a bishop. How often does the people being addicted to painkillers at what point do you is that against the word of wisdom at, no at what point do you do you take someone's temple recommend or do you let's say marijuana had been legal okay people use it for medicinal purposes people get addicted to it people smoke it every day but it never was illegal mm-hmm It's obvious this person is on marijuana. I don't know. It, it just, without like being arrested for it, how are you? And maybe that's the line for painkillers is being arrested for it. But at what point is it against the word of wisdom? Here's the answer. It's personal. No, it's when you say you're not worthy of a temple record. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Because the Temple Recommend interview, and I guess I don't know what it says now that it's updated. I haven't had it. When I received my Temple Recommend, the question was, do you adhere to the word of wisdom? That's it. That's all it is. It's a yes or no question. If you say, yes, you adhere to it, you're good. All right, so you're interviewing someone in your ward, recently was arrested for marijuana, you say, are you adhering to the Lord of Wisdom? They say yes. The bishop just lets it go. I believe so. It's the the policy is pretty strict not to stray from the questions, mm-hmm. and and they might follow it up with something like, "Does that include what does that mean to you?" Yeah, and, and that that might be as far as it goes. 
to be honest. And I think the hard part, th- it would be a hard part for the bishop because, yes, they are judges in Israel, but, you know, it's not really the bishop's place to be like, nah, you're using marijuana. Because here's my thing. Yeah, I, and I get that. And I get that. And I've heard stories of bishops like asking the child support question, knowing that the person owes child support. Person says, no, I don't owe child support. Bishop lets it go. Um, I just... And the word of wisdom, the specific wording is wholesome herbs. All wholesome herbs are for the use of man. Mm-hmm. And to me, marijuana is not a wholesome herb. I react very, very poorly, poorly to it. Yeah. Very poorly. Horribly. But to yeah, a lot of people, <laughs> to a lot of people, it's almost like a lifesaver in yeah. the way it helps their brain function work, you know? Yeah. And we should clarify that the church, I feel I should clarify, the church came out and said it's against the word of wisdom unless used medicinally. So that was brought up with the legalization of marijuana. I just wonder... I don't know. There's no... They were they were very specific about tobacco. Very specific about alcohol. Sure. Yeah. But they didn't say anything about narcotics either. Yeah. Or prescription medicine. As missionaries, we taught illegal drugs. But that was the. But now you can't include marijuana under that umbrella. Where does that come from, though? That does come from the law. Does it come from? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. The word of wisdom, or does it come from being subject to the laws of the land? And that's that's a good point. We do believe in following the law of the land. I think this comes back to our conversation about um, the word of wisdom. Are they um, and and how you're living it in your own life? Is is it all a health thing or is it an obedience thing? It's an obedience thing, and, and, and we're obedient to the Lord because we love Him. And so uh, there are specific things, but you can figure it out. Like, you know what you should be putting in your body and you know what you shouldn't. And, 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 and the guidelines are pretty simple. You can figure it out. Does marijuana belong there or not? And when you're using marijuana, do you feel worthy to go to the temple? Uh, that's the thing. It's never been really an option because Latter-day Saints tend to be good good followers of the law. Well, okay. When you use cigarettes, do you feel worthy to go to the temple? Um, well, no, but that's spelled out. I think I would, yeah, if, if it wasn't spelled out. You would feel worthy? Uh-huh. Hmm. But I love smoking. Makes me feel good. <laughs> Interesting. It I, does. Yeah. Hmm. So now that it's not spelled out, if you were using marijuana, would you feel worthy to go to the temple? No, but like I said, I it's a bad bad deal for bad me. Trip. But it's great for other people. Claim it's great, and I I, I can't I can't go against their experiences because my experience is terrible. I I think it would fall under the same issue as uh, an opioid addiction uh, a, a prescription opioid addiction where if you feel worthy to go to the temple you're good to go and that's another thing it's not on the bishop if you go to the temple unworthily it's on you I mean yeah. it's a little on the bishop but I don't think it's very much on the bishop in my opinion alright so let's say you have a secret marijuana habit you go to the temple twice a week Jesus comes, they got to redo all that work? No. No, because it's not on the person receiving the work either. 
get punished for <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll be punished for going no, away. unworthily. I don't know. I don't have any idea. Are you sure you'll be punished? That's a good point. I'm not I'm not sure. If, if you feel worthy, I'm not sure you'll be punished for it. You'll be damned, at least for a time. Hmm. And I mean Dude, because I hate weed, but I mean a bump of coke in the temple is dope. Just kidding. in the temple, <laughs> jeez, <laughs> and bro. the temple. I was just kidding. <laughs> um, All right, should we call it, or, or do you got more? I kind of I wanted to see the new standards for the temple recommend, but I am oh. struggling to find them. Um, marijuana was illegalized in the seventies by Nixon, mm-hmm. and a commission told him it doesn't need to be illegal. It definitely doesn't need to be class one or division one, whatever it is. Yeah. And Nixon went. Whatever, dude. <laughs> Left it illegal. As he does. As he does. All right. Here's the question dude. now, then. Does Nixon get punished for any of the Mexican deaths that his drug classification of marijuana caused in Mexico? You mean by God? Yeah. I don't know. I don't. That That is dangerous game. I, I know in the scriptures repeatedly it says, judge not that you be not judged. There you go. It's, uh... Everyone has to answer for their own sins. And I feel like it's punishment enough to face someone all-powerful that loves you, that's saying, what happened, man? Could you imagine? You get up there and Heavenly Father's just like, I'm so disappointed. You were so much better than that. What happened? It'd be almost like you'd want to pull a mountain down over your head so you could hide. Yeah. Well, now I'm imagining that. I don't like it. Um, the question is, do you understand and obey the word of wisdom? Did we ever do a drug cast on this one? We were going to do that as a topic, weren't we? We haven't yet. Perhaps we should have the father on for that one. Drugs? Yeah. Por qué? His... We're on opposite sides of the argument. He's very uh, much... Pro drugs for illegal. 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 And maybe he was on the opposite for that conversation. I'm not sure, but he wants to I tend to think The he's... devil's lettuce illegal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all it is. Do you understand and obey the word of wisdom? Well, this is me trying to further understand the word of wisdom. And from what I can see, other than what prophets have said, marijuana is not against it. However, and I know we're supposed to listen to the prophets. But would the prophets have said those things if marijuana wasn't illegal? If all that propaganda that what made prophets? marijuana illegal in the um, that thing we listened to together, the gospel topics. There's a few things about marijuana. Interesting. Who brings them up? I don't know. I'll look again. Interesting. It sounds like we're going to revisit marijuana, folks. Well, I don't know. Look. But, yeah, I don't... If, if you haven't guessed by now out there, I think that all drugs should be legal. I think that too many Mexicans have lost their lives in the illegal gun trade, drug trade for us to keep it illegal. And if you want to keep it illegal to save the lives of anyone who would die of a heroin overdose, if you want to blame me for anyone that would die of a heroin overdose, if... It was legal. I will take that blame. But you have to accept the blame for any Mexican who was murdered and put in a vat of acid because drugs are illegal. We both have blood on our hands. Which blood would you prefer? The guy that kills himself because he's an idiot or the innocent, hardworking people that get murdered and put in vats of acid? That took a dark turn, folks. <laughs> Check your motives. Check your motives. Dad is rolling over right now. How did I raise such a moron, he's thinking. <laughs> I hope... I don't know. I don't have the answers. It's an interesting one. Pray about that. Yeah. Pray about that. Okay. Um, for our listeners who may not have heard, uh, the prophet has asked an, an interfaith... Day of fasting this Friday. Oh, I didn't hear that. I missed that part. Oh, I'm glad. Was that in the gym? I'm glad I brought it up. Uh, It was yesterday sometime. I think afternoon? Yesterday afternoon or evening? On Friday? 
Oh, because it's Good Friday, huh? Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a Good Friday. Um, Sweet. That's an awesome. That's an awesome maybe, day of maybe fasting. Maybe fast for the economy as well as fast for the world to recover yeah. from the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, Not me. Corona. I'm fast, and the drugs will be legal. <laughs> <laughs> the coronavirus hysteria um, can settle down. And yeah, folks, if you missed conference, go back and listen. Uh, if you listen, I missed a couple talks. I'm gonna go back and listen to them. I fell asleep on my bed listening to a couple talks last night, about seven o'clock. Was there a priesthood session last night? It was a general session. In replacement of the priesthood session. That was my understanding. Because priesthood leaders, because priesthood can't go to the stake centers, or yeah. are they doing away with priesthood session? I'm not really sure. Because no, the women could go to the, pre- could stream the priesthood sessions for like the last two or three conferences. But yeah, this wasn't a priesthood session. They had this freaking 16 year old girl get up and I talk. heard there was two youths. Oh, I only got one. The first one put me to sleep. Sleepy. That's when I went. The 16 year old put you to sleep? Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, 7 she's o'clock, like, guess when I woke up? 9 a.m. <laughs> she's, she's freaking ambient. <laughs> she's against the word of wisdom. <laughs> it was crazy, bro. Nate came in my room like 2 a.m. You want your light off? He told me this later. I didn't oh, even hear. Funny. You want your light off? No, nah, man. <laughs> no, nah, man. I'll get up. I'll get up. I'm going to put the lights on. He's like. He said you're going to take your lights off. Or take yeah, your lights take out. Take my lights off. Com- <laughs> He's like, is what? what? Said. I was trying to say I'm going to take my clothes off because I was fully dressed. Never did that. Mm. Woke up this morning with I my take shoes Take my lights off. She's like, and Bobby really likes Sally, <laughs> but Jeffrey really nah, likes Sally too. Likes. <laughs> and like, sh- Bobby like doesn't like her back like, ugh. Like, like, <laughs> 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 He's going to be a good dad. <laughs> That's right, dude. That's right. No, yeah. from what I understand, it was a very good talk. So, check it out. <clears throat> Pretty good. Dope. From what I understand. Okay, sorry for the long one, folks. Uh, sorry, I'm sure I angered you with my points of view. Frankly, I'm used to it. I'm like, everything that I think makes so much sense in my mind, and everyone, like, resists it super hard, and I'm like, maybe I'm a crazy person. You so, are that, but it's unrelated to what you think. But... Um... But yeah, if you have a strong feeling about something we've said here today, message us. Yeah. You can come on. We'll put it in the comments. We'll talk about it. Put, yeah, for reals. We, we get us while we're small. You know, you can come on here and yell at us. Tell us why. I'm, yeah. And if and we and like if you, we, we'll and, keep having you when we're big. Yeah, for sure. And if we make you big, we'll make you famous. Yeah. So don't count on being famous, but come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. if not, at least comment on YouTube. Subscribe, like, tell your friends, you know. Yeah. Please. All right, folks. And if you made it this far and you're listening to our advertisements. Thanks for listening to Danite Radio. Yeah. All righty. Have a great week and God bless.